Hi guys, hope you had a great day at school today. It's always a great day at Hemlock and Ace. Tonight's bedtime story is Jake the Growling Dog by Samantha Shannon. And this is one of my favorites because Jake has to learn how to be a good friend so that he can play and have fun with all of his friends in the forest. And it's a good lesson for all of us to remember how we uh, talk to others and how we play together really affects our friendships. So this is Jake the Growling Dog. In an emerald green forest in the Pacific Northwest, you'll find Jake, a misunderstood dog at best. He has fur like fresh cotton candy, large pointy ears, and a big bushy tail that gets puffier each year. He has a caramel coat, a chocolate stripe down his face, and each tasty shade is in just the right place. Jake is fast, quite fast, they say, with a twitch and a spring as he goes on his way. Jake loves to run among the tallest of trees, swim in deep rivers, and chase after frisbees. But no matter what Jake loves to do, you'll always hear him growling too. He growls while he eats, grrr. And he growls while he plays. And he growls while being scratched in his favorite ear place. He growls while he sleeps. He growls while he swims. And he growls in his bed while being tucked in. One day, Jake was hiking a trail lined with thistle and two yellow warblers flew by with a whistle. Why do you growl, they asked, looking sad. What is it that always makes you so mad? I'm not mad, Jake growled cheerfully. I'm just as happy as can be. I'm having fun out here on the trail, dashing around and wagging my tail. Grrr. But Jake, don't you notice that animals run away and even the little children won't play? Jake thought for a moment, and he stopped for a sniff. Then he chewed on a perfectly good-looking stick. He growled while he thought, and with each snapping chew, his mind wandered back, and it wasn't good news. He growled at Molly when she scratched his ears. It was a growl of delight, but she ran off in fear. He growled at the neighbor's dog every day. Hi, Mr. Pomeranian, do you want to play? But the dog always left without a goodbye. Jake assumed that he was just being shy. Jake didn't know why everyone was so scared. How could he show them how much he cared? They said it was his growly voice. Could it be? But it made him sound that unfriendly? While lost in his thoughts, Jake bit down on his lip and he cried out in pain and whimpered a bit. Yet. To the birds, it was the scariest of growls. It sounded more like a frightening howl. Full of fear, they took flight from the trees, leaving nothing but the falling flutter of leaves. Why doesn't anyone understand me? Why can't they see I'm not actually mean? But nobody answered because Jake was alone by himself in the forest, all on his own. I wonder how Jake feels. It must be sad to be all alone. Then he heard an ahem, a faint whispering call. Maybe he wasn't alone after all. Up here, Jake the growling dog. I know your growl is your voice. You're just saying hello. Jake looked around. He looked up, he looked down. He became quite dizzy spinning around. Zooming above at spectacular speeds, a flicker of blackness flew through the trees. It was a lone black squirrel, nearly too swift to see. Jake couldn't find her. She was so fast indeed. I like you, Jake. You have a big heart, I can see. Really, that's all that's important to me. But others are scared, Jake said with a groan. Playing just isn't fun on my own. I'll help you squeak the squirrel from the tree. We'll work on your growl to make it friendly. So Jake and the squirrel, whose name was Neat, spent days trying to make his voice sound sweet. Neat begged other animals to help with their training, but it took plenty of urging and they just kept complaining. A painted turtle stayed in her shell for a week after Neat tried to have the two of them meet. A black-tailed deer was so frightened by him that she bucked about wildly and started to spin. Then there was the Bufflehead duck that heard Jake, he let out a squawk and he flew out of the lake. 
Oh, what's the use? cried Jake in despair. They don't understand me. They don't even care. Then something magical happened. No one could explain. As more and more animals watched them each day, they watched from shadows, ferns, and high perches in trees, from lakes, from rocks, and trickling streams. The more they watched, the more they could see that Jake was just misunderstood, they agreed. Jake was kind. He was sweet, though he growled all day. He was different, they noticed, which was more than okay. Soon dogs played with him, and owners and children too. They scratched his ears and gave him treats to chew. They played with him with balls and sticks and even taught him cool new tricks. Jake was happier than he'd ever been, so he growled the greatest of growls, one that shook his body and ruffled his fur, sending off sweet cotton candy smells. But then he stopped short. Did he scare his new friends? He winced and he thought, oh no, not again. Yet when he opened his eyes, his friends hadn't strayed. They smiled and laughed, ready to play. I wonder why they didn't run away this time. We are all different and that's okay. It makes us unique in our own special way. The end. Good night, guys. Sweet dreams. I'll see you at school tomorrow.